We're going to come between the two coracoid curls, stick our scissors in right above the coracoid bar, and open up. And right up to the intermandibularis. We're going to cut along the coracoid bar. So this kind of opens like French doors. You can see that white membrane of the pericardium I'm cutting into. And again, we don't care about the common coracoid curls anymore, so we just remove them. It makes it easier for you to see everything. But there's the parietal pericardium right up against the common coracoid curls. Okay, gotta cut back a little bit more. Here's our pericardium, cut through that, open things up a bit. And I think we can go up just a little bit more cranial here. There we go. So here you can see the shark's heart. There's our conus arteriosus, uniform width because we have no bulb on it. There's our ventricle. And on either side of the conus arteriosus is the atrium. And that can lead to a misunderstanding. It looks like there are two atria, like in your mud puppy, but there's only one. It's U-shaped. And the conus arteriosus is in the crotch of the U. All right? So, on our ventricle, we can see blood vessels. Those are coronary blood vessels, not too surprising. You get lucky and get the right angle, lift up on the heart, on the ventricle, I should say, and you'll see that light there underneath. Oops. Well, it's kind of black because the, uh, I can't, sorry. But right behind the coracoid bar, you'll see a blue light, which is a sinus venosis. All right, so the next part is the challenging part, opening up the jaws. Be careful, the teeth are sharp. We're gonna cut through the muscle. That's gonna make it easier for you to go into the jaws of the bone clippers. Again, seriously, be careful of the teeth here because they are going to be sharp. They're small, but they're sharp, and there are lots of them. And you may want to have the large scissors with you to help augment the bone clippers as you go. There's nothing pretty about this. Yeah, we got a crunch there. It's just like eating pork rind. And probably just as healthy. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, these bone clippers will sometimes break on you as you're going. So, we got the, if that happens, you just got to put the arms back together again. And then there it is, opened up. You can see the primary tongue. And although, thank you. Although we're not worried about it, because it's not injected, if you look close, you'll see going through the tongue, the ventral aorta, and the branches going off to each gill. A lot of times it's easier if you just go ahead and stab the lower jaw down so you don't have to worry about flopping back on you while you're dissecting. And then here, of course, We've got vomit. Wow, your animal is horribly injected. So you may not get anything much out of this at all, Caitlin. 
But this white is the oral mucosa. That's what we're going to remove. You can see here the spherical. And then, of course, as we look at this, and that's why I say it's not injected very well, here's our demi-bright. It's not pink or blue, which it should be pink. Here's another demi bright Here's your gill bright. So here we see the first demi bright the pre-traumatic demi bright then our first post-traumatic demi bright Let's open this up just a little further. see our first holobranch. Post-traumatic demibranch, interbranchial septum, pre-traumatic demibranch. So a holobranch versus a demibranch. Okay? So the next step is going to involve using a scalpel and forceps for just a little bit, lifting up, <coughs> lifting up on this white oral mucosa and cutting it back. And then what happens after this is really luck of the draw, and I think we're going to have no luck here at all. But it really just depends on how well injected your animal was. And since Caitlin Shark's gill membranes are so pale, I don't think we're going to see much here. But you're just going to peel this away and look for the underlying pink blood vessels. Here's one, there's a second, but they're not good on this animal. But there are the ethobranchials right there, taking oxygenated blood from the gills back to the dorsal aorta. Now, a lot of this is not injected, but you should see pink here and here, which would be the internal carotids. Let's see, wait a minute, there's a little bit of pink. So here we can see a little of that pink. That's the internal carotid. Here's the hyoidin epibranchial. Again, not great. Hopefully your animal will be better than this. And we should be able to see a few epibranchial bronchial running like so. Unfortunately, this really is poorly injected, so we can't see the radex aorta, which would be here. So hopefully we'll have another animal in here that's much better injected and we'll be able to see that better. Um, still there's work to be done here, Caitlin, but mm -hmm. because you're not going to be able to see a lot here, unfortunately. Okay?